Wednesday. We're here for AM Business and thanks for joining us for this very edition for the week. And we're talking or being told that uh, Ghana needs a regulatory body for the road transport sector. Uh, many of you will be asking why. Well, a couple of days ago, research was presented to the Parliamentary Select Committee on Roads and Transport, which uh, highlighted or indicated a number of issues affecting the sector. And this was done by CAT International. And uh, I'll be having in the studio a representative of CAT International, Apia Kusia Dumako. And um, uh, we'll be asking critical questions of him. But uh, now let's get some facts. The road transport sector takes over 90% of passenger volumes in the country. That's uh, as big as it can be. Because allocation of bus routes should be based on needs on the ground and route franchising through competitive tendering processes. The question also is, is that what takes place? Because successful transport companies will have to compete to maintain their operation on specific routes by merits. And um, uh, the question will be, what's the role of MMDAs here? Especially when we're talking about bus rapid transit and the way competitive transport needs to be run. And my colleague, Sheila Tamaklo, fortunately, was at and about in town with a center coordinator for CATS International. And uh, she uh, came out with this very report. The bus rapid transit system and transport system, which is set to improve vehicular movement and reduce delays on some busy streets, will bring relief to motorists. The system generally has specialized design, services, and infrastructure. One important infrastructure is the road system. Typical examples of roads which can support this system are the Akoje Interchange and the Graphic Road Overhead in Accra. We first make a stop at the Akoje Interchange. Perhaps before this road was constructed, a uh, later part of the 90s, it was just one runabout. And anybody coming here called the Sankara Circle would have to break. So the traffic was unbearable. But when this road was constructed, you see that those who are driving on the ring road are down. They don't need to stop. And also those on the Independence Avenue would also have no need to stop. And that the interchange for those on the ring road who want to join the Independence Avenue at the same time just have to take the other side of the interchange and move on. So this is really an essential feature. According to, according to a research that we conducted, if we were to get 10 of these roads, this uh, interchanges in Accra, what it means is that traffic in Accra will be reduced by one third and also the amount of money that we spend on buying fuel will also go down. You know that when, whenever you are in traffic, you burn a lot of fuel. And once we get this uh, efficient route, it mean, what it means is that cars will be able to move on without having to waste fuel. That means that there will be more money in your pocket to spend on household uh, needs. And also it means that people can also get to home and work easily without having to wake up at dawn and drive in traffic and get to work time. And so I think going forward, government should look at this. Next, we head to the new overhead located at the graphic road, which was constructed to allow traffic flow over the rail line. And so if you were to have a, a bus BRT route with uh, buses having to stop to allow trains to come, that will actually slow down the pace of tr uh, bus traffic. So the World Bank in 2009 provided support to Ghana government to construct this infrastructure so as to enhance the movement of the bus uh, rapid transit in, on this route. You have the BRT on top, on, on top and then other cars down. You know, the BRT will not be obstructed by a, a passing train, but then the other uh, non-BRT buses will, uh, can be obstructed by a moving train. The country was expected to begin operating the bus rapid transit system in Accra in November last year. However, Joy Business learns that some of the projects have stalled. This project has is running behind schedule, though the road has been constructed, yet by the infrastructure of the car, of the buses has still, still delayed simply because of how 
most of these short uh, GPR to you and some drivers associations are resisting the operation but we are told by the AMA mayor that uh, before the end of the year the BRT will kick in and the transport system in Accra on this section of the route uh, of the area will be improved Mm, so Apia Kusi is uh, here with us and um, Apia Kusi Adomako works with CART International and we need to be asking the critical questions and um, first I, I would ask you, I know that uh, prior to this very report I read that you had met uh, the Parliamentary Select Committee on the sector mm -hmm. and basically just to brief them on, on your report? Yes. What did you find out first in your report as you briefed them? Okay, so we found out that there is no proper regulation in the sector. If you look at the, all the four sectors of the transport, the air, the marine, the rail, then the road, the first three are regulated, but then the last one, the road sector, is not being regulated. So what it means is that most of the unions have, uh, have, enga have engaged themselves in self-regulation, and self-regulation is also not efficient. For example, GPRTU, is becoming a very powerful union group, always trying to confront the city authorities and sometimes resist regulation. For example, when uh, DVLS said that all commercial cars are to have seat beds in it, DVA, uh, Metro, uh, this GPRTU and some unions resisted it and said that DVLA has to back out in implementing that requirement of the ally. So that was one issue that we found, the absence of, of a regulatory body in the transport sector. And we also found out that there is no proper route rationalization system in the city. So for example, if you go to Kwame Nkrumah Circus Terminal, you'll find many people queuing for a car while there are no cars. Mm. And then the same terminal, there'll be cars going to some locations and there are no passengers uh, so meaning what they don't pull resources no just we, because so you see that some areas are over supply others are under supply and so the drivers and the unions are doing what we call cherry picking picking rules that best suit them and no one can force them to run on this uh, road you know if you go to most cities we have this route rationalization in fact, it's been in our book for many years and we've not been able to implement it. Under the regulations, the MMDs are required to issue permit to vehicle operators and license route for them. For example, this is Coco Mlimli. What we will do is that we will, uh, the, the municipality will open a tender for a union group to come and bid and tell us that, look, on every route, we require you to have, let's say, 10 cars running on an interval of five minutes each. That means that the bus doesn't need to be full before it moves. By this, passengers can what, mortgage their life and their, uh, route, their schedule on the buses. Okay. But it's not so. So some areas are under serve, while others are also over serve. Mm. But critically, for all the things that you're talking about, the routes that you're talking about, and the routing system, uh, is it not because they are under a certain kind of regulation, management, and uh, some kind of system? So they all, those resources or their vehicles are pulled into one pool, so to speak. And so they are the divisions and, and, the, and the assignments as they should be. Under the proposed plan, what it means is that various uh, car owners would have to form an association to be managed by a management group. And so, for example, if I have a, a bus or a trotro, I'll go and tender in my bus to the company. The, car, the company is going to manage it, and then at the end of the month, they will pay me a dividend based upon how the company performs. But since we don't, the ownership structure of buses and trotros in our cities is largely uh, held by individual owners. It is making it difficult to implement it. But the best way that we can do is that government may should be able to provide support and acquire the buses for them 
and mm -hmm. let's get rid of most of these cars that have been in the road for more than 60 years. You go to Dansumine Dan and Kaneshi, some of the buses are not even roadworthy, but they are still uh, running on the road. And so that is what we need to do. That is what we need to do to be able to uh, get that uh, thing mm. uh, working. Okay. But, uh, and I know all this forms part of what you call the crew project. It's just a crew project. Okay. So it means that you, you undertook the research and you found out that these were some of the lapses that we had in the system. Yes. Okay. So we t undertook the research. The project uh, is a four country project, Ghana, India, Philippines, and Zambia. So in Ghana, we selected the transport sector and also the staple food sector. But this one, we are talking about the transport sector. Okay. And we... Uh, and these were your findings? These were our findings. Okay. And it's, I'm glad to tell you that the Ministry of Transport has also bought into the findings of the crew research. And they have also started the process of getting a regulatory body for the road transport sector. But the issue is that the process has slowed down since the last three years when the ministry started the process. But what we as an organization working in the transport sector, we are also providing support in terms of knowledge partner uh, to the ministry as it goes about evolving uh, through the process of uh, the route, through the process of the establishment of the Road Transport Authority. Mm. But that also brings to mind about what some of the best practices are in other countries, especially once we know there is a research involving at least four pilot countries. Um, the system that you, you think should have been the ideal, is that what is practiced in a more developed or, or perhaps even better places where they manage their transport, commercial transport better? Uh, what we decided to do is we have to look within our local contents and our resources okay. and not to just import foreign solutions, but solutions that would work within our context. And so we are not using examples from New York or London or Paris or Tokyo, but we are using examples from developing countries like uh, India, uh, Rural and some countries. So it means that you're using conceptualized approaches because you want to make sure that uh, whatever it is that you recommend and if they are implemented would be very much localized or perhaps fits the needs of the of the localities. Yes. All right. Uh, I, I, this um, for me is a bit different, but I know that it's the better way to manage the 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 transport that we have. How then does it take into cognizance? the private players or the or the public players because now we have mmt and then we have the commercial because sometimes they they tend to have some level of apprehension as to whether they they are going to be gaining or not gaining and the way we run our system is also based on private ownership of the various transport uh, so operations yeah that is one of the gaps in the existing regulation in the road sector okay you see, DVLA is doing one thing, Road Safety Commission is doing one thing, and then police, MMT is also doing one thing. And so if we were to have a proper regulatory body for the road transport, what it means is that we are going to allocate a route for MMT so that MMT will not be competing with uh, other unions on certain routes. Mm. And also the regulatory body would also be able to set standard safety and complaints mechanism. So for now, if you, uh, you are in uh, VIP bus and something wrong happens, who are you going to report to? So at least you know that you can call somebody. Yes. So the, the, the regulatory body will do all these things to make sure that there wouldn't be any f uh, f uh, fighting and also make sure that there is also competition in the sector. Competition in the sector means that if you are not performing well, for example, if we give this Kokumlimle to company A to manage the uh, bus the system here, at the end of the term, if it is two years, they are going to assess you and also they are going to open it to tender again. Okay. You go to the UK, especially on the real sector, that's what they do. 
every two years they run the tender and if you win some years ago virgin was running some route on the rail and then virgin lost once you lose your franchise you have to sell all your assets to whoever wins it and so it's a best practice that we can also adopt yeah. uh, adopt in very interesting does it always has to do or got to do with the bus rapid transit system because not, it's well regulated yes not necessarily or we, or, or we can fuse that with the current commercial uh, way we run our transport system yes so under the proposed brt system what we are we the brt is going to have is on dedicated lanes and this normal trot trust would us as a feeder into the brt lane so for example if i stay some community a community five five uh, meters five miles outside the main road i can take a trotter uh, uh, and then that trotter will bring me onto the onto the main road where i can get mm where i can get the brt so that is so it means that but the, the trotro will not run on the brt route uh, can it be uh, co-opted onto the brt route? no we cannot if, if it if it meets the specifications if, if let's say not necessarily i'm not talking about trotro let's say a private a private opera operator that meets the the specification uh, you must belong to the group so okay. Accra, for example we have the gap t a uh, gap t is going to be the company that's going to manage the right. brt system all right, we have on the line Cecil Gabra. Um, he's a transport and road safety expert. And for many of you who follow road safety and, and the transport sector in the country, you know that he's also a consultant on many of the issues. Now, um, I, I would want to know from you, Mr. Gabra, from your experiences also from other jurisdictions, um, has it taken us so long for us to recognize that within the law, it says we need to have a regulatory body for the road transport sector? Yeah, hello. Hello, good morning. Uh, is that Mr. Yeah, good, good morning. Good yes, morning, and, uh, okay. I would uh, want to ask you, within the law, is there a space for a regulatory body? Uh, your, your line is very faint. Hello, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. By still faint? Well, I'll manage it. Okay. Um, within the law, is there space for a regulatory body for the road transport sector? I'm asking you this because, um, for example, we want to bring in a bus rapid transit system. Now, uh, we also have an existing commercial system in which uh, we run, uh, but in the way we run it, it needs to be regulated alongside a new system we're also introducing. How will a regulatory body be very important? Is it, is it within the law or do we have the space for it? Well, if, you could, if I could hear you, you are asking about the um, bus rapid transit system, whether it's visible. Is that it? By law. Um, I'm asking whether we could have a regulatory body. Now that we're about to introduce, let's say, the BERT uh, alongside the normal commercial transport operations that we have, do we need uh, a regulatory body? And is that situated within the, the context of the law? Okay, all right. I think I'll get you right now. Right. Um, thank you so much. I would first of all go to a little bit of the history of uh, this BRT. The BRT was um, um, first, uh, we had a short cutting ceremony by the vice president, I mean, who is now the president, in 2011. And um, now we are going to, this is five years. Already we've lost it all. And we sit in the country and we see the BRC system, and we, it will take us five years for us to start it. Then, in the first place, vehicular population, which is on the increase by 10 percent 15 percent uh, annum will of course proceed this whole idea now um to your issue on the regulatory um body yes i think we need it we need we need a system like this um however if the regulatory system comes in then therefore we will have to look at a situation where the commercial the existing commercial buses as well as and the taxis um, can all work together. Um, again, I would say that the regulatory system uh, um, will manage all these affairs. 
and uh, make sure that we have the two running concurrently. However, it's, we have failed as a nation. The uh, DRC system is late. I look at it and ask myself, which link are they really going to use? Okay, in a um, lot of countries, you would realize that the DRC system is always in the middle lane, uh, co-pedicated, cannot drive in that lane. It's, it's even, as, uh, um, it is, in some cases, it has um, what barricades you can never go into it. And I understand we have gone a very long way to put up a management system to manage it. Well, so uh, do we need a, a, regula a regulatory body, I mean? Because knowing that now we're, we have, well, we're supposed to have a BRT system and running alongside the way we run our commercial transport system. I think we need it. I think we need it. We need it, for sure. Mm. And what, what will be its role, per se, um, if we put it in context uh, in relation to what happens in, the, in, other, in other countries? Well, this um, whole BRT is really copied from another country. Mm. And in other countries, we have regulatory bodies that will manage the system itself for it to be very effective. So, and in short of all this, I think the regulatory system, uh, but it must come to regulate the system. Now, how are we going to make sure that we, we, we are not, per se, starting a project for which we may not have enough um, infrastructure or logistics or capacity for? As for the infrastructure, I'll uh, be honest with you that it's just about 1% uh, of what I think of. Because if the BRT is um, going to run from Accra to Kaso and I understand one is going to run through Medina, then uh, that's just about 1% of the uh, Accra road. And um, to me, it is not going to be really effective. However, back to regulatory body, we really need it to manage affairs of the road. We do not have any road system, and I believe the regulatory body is not only going to manage the affairs of the BRT system, but it's really going to manage traffic uh, and make sure that both commercial vehicles, both private vehicles, as well as the bus uh, rapid system will all share the road. Well, very interesting as it is. And uh, thank you very much also for joining us for the discussion. Uh, and that's uh, Cecil Gabra, a road safety expert. And uh, as, as we have it, following that very research that you have undertaken, uh, Mr. Adramakun, uh, how then do we make sure that the regulatory body is within the context of what the law says? And are we thinking about it as a country? Okay. So, I mean, the best practice everywhere is that you have the local authorities managing their transport. So the local government access to the four gives the right of transport to the MMDAs to do that. But currently, uh, they don't have the capacity to do that. They only register vehicles for the purpose of getting revenue. And that transport department in the, in the MMDAs are more like the managing the fleet of the assemblies. So with the RTA coming into place will mean that RTA would have to work through the conduit of the existing transport department at the ministries, at the various MMDs, and also uh, developing their capacity to be able to function as a one-stop uh, place to regulate transport in the sector. So I think it's not a rocket science. We can do it, and I think there's no time to do it than to do it now. Mm. If we don't have enough, let's say, we, we, we don't have enough lanes, how do we run a, a well-regulated transport system? Yes, I mean, you are right. Transport system is a, a function of the road and the vehicle. So now we have procured more buses for the BRT system, and the more lanes are, more lanes are being added to the existing lane. If you go through that, or from, no, this place, Tesano, for example, they have constructed, they have added 0 0.8 kilometer stretch to the existing lane. So gradually, gradually, we can still make it. And you see, the law 
allows the minister to dedicate a lane as a BRT lane. And, w and if the BRT becomes operational, what it means is that most people would park their cars at home and hop on board the BRT. The, the BRT. Because there will be them parking lanes close to the station. Yes, there will be more... The boarding, the boarding areas. Boarding areas and also uh, the road will also be free. Okay. Uh, will be free from needless uh, traffic. So I think we are running behind schedule. We've missed a lot of deadlines. But mm -hmm. last year we were told that we we're going to have it in November 2015. And we never got it done and we are still told that we can still have it uh, this year before the stroke of midnight 31st december oh well, we hope that you're hopeful though thank you very much and thanks for joining us this morning for am business and that's been this week's edition make sure you join us same time next week on wednesday when we have am business but as always you're always with the show and we're so much grateful we've had in the studio pia kusi adomako is with cards international an international research and policy uh, group on uh, the transport on research on yeah. research just a pure research group yes. thank you very much uh, we're taking a break when we come back we'll have a lot more for you and then uh, we'll have other discussions uncle lebo white will be coming to us so he has a new book